Today we're going to be working on a 2002 Ford F-250 Super Duty with a 7.3 liter power stroke. We're going to be replacing our high pressure oil pump as well as our high pressure oil lines. And also the pressure sensor. We're going to show you a few tips and a few tricks on how to install these parts as easily as possible get it done right the first time, and get you back up and running in no time. The first steps in replacing the high pressure oil pump and the lines and the pressure sensor are gonna be removing the cover, as well as the back pressure sensor and the fuel filter housing assembly. And you can actually see all of those steps in another video we have on our channel when we actually show you how to replace the fuel filter housing assembly itself. We'll also be doing an oil change on this after the high pressure oil pump has been replaced. So before we go through the steps, we're gonna go ahead and drain the oil because oftentimes when a high pressure oil pump goes out, it's due to debris or poor oil going through the pump itself. So we don't wanna take a chance of causing any damage to the new pump by allowing that old oil to go through. So we'll bypass that by draining the oil before we get started and then doing an oil change after we get the new high pressure oil pump in, just to make sure that we have good, clean, fresh oil going through that new pump. Now that we've removed the fuel filter housing assembly and we can access the high pressure oil pump, we've got a few things that we need to remove before we can actually remove the high pressure oil pump itself. To begin with, we have our pigtail that we need to remove. We have our high pressure oil pump lines, one here and one over here, and then right back underneath on this side, as well as underneath on this side, we have two bolts that are gonna be holding this pump against its mount. So we'll remove those items and then we can go to the front side. One note I will make on the high pressure oil pump lines, a common mistake that's made, and it does seem to be easier at the time, would be to remove the high pressure oil pump lines via this nut. The problem with that is when you go to reinstall the high pressure oil pump and the lines, these often get stripped going back into the pump, causing them to blow out and you'll have really a lot worse issue than you had to begin with. So the recommended service on this would be to use the quick disconnect tool, which will go in between the quick disconnect on the line itself and the assembly giving you a much easier removal and a much easier reinstallation. So make sure you pick one of these up to do this particular part of the service. With everything on the back of the high pressure oil pump now removed, we have to come to the front. And what you'll find is this bracket here. Now that's where the back pressure sensor will be located. You'll be removing that before you go into the, the main removal process of the fuel filter housing assembly. Underneath of that bracket, there is a nut that holds on the tube for the feedback sensor. You'll remove that, and then if you'll notice, we have a nut right here, and then another one down on this side. Once we remove those two nuts, this bracket will come off as one piece with this mounting plate and that'll give us access to the nut that's holding the high pressure oil pump onto the gear. Now that we have the plate removed, we can now access the bolt that's inside the housing holding the high pressure oil pump onto the gear. The easiest way to get that bolt off would be to have one socket on the harmonic balancer bolt with a long extension or breaker bar to keep the engine from turning and another on the bolt located inside the housing going in the opposite direction. Once you get the bolt broken free, it's as simple as using a ratchet to pull it the rest of the way out. Make sure you remove the bolt and the washer at the same time. The washer can decide that it wants to kind of fall out of the way. Just make sure that you pull that out with it. You don't want that to fall out and not have access to it. Once we had all our bolts removed and we had our lines removed as well, we were able to gently slide the pump out and then pull it straight up out of the galley that it sits in. 
One thing you do want to make absolutely sure of when you get the pump out is that the gasket comes with it. Worst thing you can do replacing one of these pumps is double gasketing. Kind of hard to do, it's very easy to notice, but just to make sure because these do sometimes stick to the mounting side and don't come off with the pump itself. So make sure that that does come off with it. One other thing to mention, since we are replacing our pressure sensor that sits on the back side of the high pressure oil pump, we did not remove this one during the removal of the high pressure oil pump. There was no need. And in reverse, when we do put the new high pressure oil pump in, we're gonna go ahead and put the new pressure sensor on the new pump before we install the pump, just as we did with this one coming out, we did not remove it. It's gonna give us a little bit easier installation. And we'll already have that part in and down to the right specifications. Now that we have our old high pressure oil pump completely removed and we have our new high pressure oil pump prepped and ready to go, we have our gasket in place so that when we line this up against the mounting surface, that'll be where it needs to be. We've also gone ahead and put the new pressure sensor on. So that's ready to go when we line this up and put it in place. And all we'll have to do is put a pigtail on there. And then I've also, as you see here, gone ahead and put the high pressure oil pump lines back in the position locked in at the engine side. So once we get the new high pressure oil pump installed and we get the two bolts in the back holding it on, we can simply pop our new high pressure oil pump lines right on to the high pressure oil pump. We'll have our pigtail already installed on the pressure sensor. We'll have our two bolts in and then we just have to come back to the front for the nut and washer. Now that we have our new oil pump replaced, all of our bolts and connections are tightened down to the right specifications. Our last step is gonna be replacing the cover and putting that back on so that we don't have any oil leaks. And what we're gonna to have to do here, we're gonna to have to clean all of this gasket material off as well as where it mounts. We're gonna reapply some new gasket material so that it gets a good secure seal and we don't have any oil leaks afterwards. Now that we have our high pressure oil pump completely and fully reinstalled, we've got our new high pressure oil lines in, we have our new pressure sensor in, and everything's torqued down to the right specifications. All our bolts are accounted for, all of our pigtails are accounted for. Everything is tightened down right, so we're gonna make sure we don't have any oil leaks, and we've got it ready to go. Uh, the last steps we'll take, of course, is just to replace, you know, of course, the top cover here, our fuel filter housing assembly, our coolant hose that we had to remove, and our back feed pressure sensor. And then, of course, we'll also go through, like I said earlier in the video, and make sure we get a fresh, clean oil change done on this truck. That way, the first time this thing starts up, that new high-pressure oil pump receives good, fresh, clean oil, which is vital to this high-pressure oil pump lasting many, many years and many, many miles to come. And hopefully now you have a better understanding of what it takes to replace a high-pressure oil pump, the lines, and that new pressure sensor on this 2002 Ford F-250 Power Stroke 7.3 Diesel.